So have you ever wondered, when you're free transforming in Adobe Photoshop, whether it's actually possible to control the direction of rotation and scale? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is discover how we can use a tool that's very similar to the anchor point in Adobe After Effects, except it's got a slight twist in the name in Adobe Photoshop, and see how we can create a shape such as this by using triangles to form a hexagon. Great, so I have Adobe Photoshop open, and what we're going to do is discover how we can use this tool in order to create a hexagon made of six triangles. What we need to do is create a triangle to start off with. So what I'm going to do is go to the triangle tool at the bottom here, the third option underneath the rectangle tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to it is U, and that's both for Windows and Mac. Then releasing on that, what I'm going to do is just hold and drag on our canvas, maybe hold shift in order to keep it a equilateral triangle. I think my mouse is right when I say that and then release, and then I might go to the move tool, shortcut is V for both Windows and Mac, and then just position it into the center so that the top of our triangle is in the center, and then we can basically create five other duplicates in order to create a hexagon. So normally when we press free transform, so command and T on Mac or control and T for Windows, we obviously have several features that we can change. So we can rotate our shape, we can scale our shape, and we can also reposition our shape. I'm actually going to undo all three of those. But one of the things we can't control is where we actually want to rotate our shape from. So for example, when I rotate at the moment, it's automatically going to rotate from the center of our object. Or what if I wanted to actually rotate around the tip of our triangle? Well, what we need to do is use a tool that's called the reference point. And this is where knowledge from other softwares, where you might use tools such as the anchor point, become very useful because it works exactly the same except it's just called something slightly different and you have to actually activate it when you want to use it. So in order to actually activate the reference point in Adobe Photoshop, what we need to do is go to the top parameters of our free transform and then tick on this first box right here. And as you can see, the reference point automatically appears here. Now do excuse me if I actually say anchor point at any point in this video, I automatically just refer to it as the anchor point, but it's actually called the reference point in Photoshop. So what you can do with the reference point is you can actually move it around your shape and actually determine the area from which you rotate your shape around. It doesn't actually have to be within the space of the object. What you can do is move it anywhere in the canvas and actually rotate your object around that point. And if I quickly undo that, just so we have it back to standard, what you can also do is snap it to any of these corners. So just by holding and dragging, as you can see, it's gonna automatically snap to any of these edges or in fact, to the center of our shape. You can also do this by going to this grid at the top right here so as you can see at the moment, it's set to the center, but you can actually move it to the top right by pressing right here or moving it to the left by pressing on this option here. So you can use any of these just to be more precise and it might save you some time from actually moving it manually. Now, if you want the reference point to automatically be enabled every time you open Photoshop, what you can do is if I quickly press tick on this is go to Photoshop and then go to preferences and then go to tools. And then from here, what you need to do is just make sure there's a tick next to the option that says show reference point when using transform. As you can see, I've already got it enabled, but in case you don't, that's one way you can do it. And of course, if you don't want it, just make sure it's unticked. So just to give you a good example of how you might want to use the reference point in order to speed up some of your designs. If I want to create a hexagon using this triangle by having five other duplicates, what I'm gonna do is use a shortcut that allows us to do this quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is hold down command option on my keyboard and press T, create a duplicate whilst also bring it into free transform. That'll be control alt and T for windows. I'm then going to move the reference point to the top of our triangle so I can use the grid at the top here. And as you can see, that's automatically snapped to the top. And then what I'm going to do is rotate our triangle in this direction. Actually, we'll probably go in this direction so that we don't go into the negatives. And as you can see, I need to be slightly more precise. So I know that the angle that we need is 60 degrees. So I can input that at the top right here. As you can see, that's automatically snapped our equilateral triangle into shape. And then I can just press enter. And as you can see, that's gonna confirm the free transform. Now, all I have to do now in order to repeat that four other times is just press command, shift and option, and then tap T, or that will be control, shift and alt for windows, and then tap T. Every time you tap T, it'll create a new duplicate in that direction. And as you can see, now we've got a hexagon made of six individual triangles. So that's just one really quick way in order to create a shape with lots of other smaller shapes. Now lastly, one other thing we can do with the reference point is determine the direction of the scale of the object. 
So in order to do this, what we need to do is bring our shape into free transform by pressing Command and T or Control and T. And then what we can do is move the reference point around. So for example, I could snap it to this top right hand corner. Now what we'd expect at this stage is that anytime I try to scale the object, it's actually going to scale from this point. But one thing we'll notice is it's not actually going to do that. So what do we need to do in order to ensure that it's only going to scale from this point? Well, on Mac, what we need to do is hold down the Option key, or if you're on Windows, just hold down the Alt key. And you'll notice when you have that key held in and you try to scale your object, it's only going to scale in the direction of the reference point. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're also interested in learning how you can actually draw custom shapes using the pen tool in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video on the right of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content, and do remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.